The challenge for this video is can I animate a bar of soap? A lot of people ask me how to get started in stop motion animation, and I always tell them the same thing, animate household objects. Something simple like a bar of soap, a shoe, a mug, anything, and see what kind of character you can create. So I can make this bar of soap look like a snake. I can make it look like a mouse. I can make it look like a frog. And the point is that I'm using motion to create a performance, to create character. If you can use motion to turn any object into any character, then you can be an animator. So I bought all these bars of soap and I need to figure out how to rig them up so that I can animate them standing, jumping. I'm also gonna put some wiggly eyes uh, on the soap to make it look like a little character. I have this ball and socket rig that I often use while animating small objects. This should work perfectly for the soap. So if the soap's like that, then the only trick is how do I get this rig to stick to the soap? I'm pretty limited in what I can do. Tape won't stick to it. I can't put a screw or anything into it. So I wanna see if I can embed um, a magnet in it that this rig will stick to. So I might drill a hole and put the magnet in. Hot glue might work. So let's just explore and see what we can do. I should mention that I'm using this red soap just because it'll pop really well off the green screen. And then it'll probably look good in any setting that I put it in. Uh, I didn't want to use white soap in case I use like a white bathtub background or something. So this will be my test bar of soap. I'm just gonna drill anywhere and see what happens. Ooh, that went in really fast. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. So I think I'm just gonna fill this hole with glue, put the magnet in and just see what happens. All right, while this magnet glue dries, I'm gonna do another test for the wiggly eye. The glue behind the magnet seems to be hardened, so I'm gonna give it a test on the rig. So the magnet is staying in the soap. So I think this is a good solution. This really works. This eye is stuck on there. Same with this magnet. So this is how I've rigged up the soap. So from behind when the soap needs to, uh, you know, stand up or jump in the air, I can use this rig to support it. I'm going to make three of these soap puppets, and one will have a magnet in the back here, uh, one will have a magnet in the side here, and one will have a magnet in the other side. And that's so I can animate two camera, like this, um, and then like this, and like this. So to give me different options in case the soap spins around and I need to work with an edge and see the back. You can see behind this magnet sized hole, there's that smaller channel in there. And that just lets it fill up with glue and kind of give the glue some grip in there to hold the magnet in. All right, there's the rigging magnets glued in. I'll put the eyes on pretty much like this. I'll use this rectangular design on the front to uh, center the eyes. All right, that's three bars of soap rigged up for animation. And I've added the wiggly eyes for some character design. Yeah, let's see what we can animate. Okay, so the soap is ready to be animated, and the first thing you need to decide before animating any object 
is what's the personality, what's the behavior of the object, what's the situation the object is in, and I decided that the soap is going to be trying to move along across the scene, but it's slippery, it's a piece of soap, so it's gonna be like it's on really slippery ice. And after making that decision, I have to think what's the actual performance going to be. So I wanna keep things fairly simple, so I'm thinking kind of breaking it up, you know, like a story, like a beginning, middle, end. So I'll have the soap come in, and it'll be whoa, whoa, whoa. so it's like off balance, and then I think it'll arrive in the middle, and then slowly it'll whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and then it'll start like getting out of control and then flat land on its back or something. That's kind of the climax. And then from there, I think the soap's just gonna do on its back like a <laughs> inchworm or rocket's way out of the scene. All right, I've just finished part one of this animation. So let's take a look. My thought process, every single frame is, am I communicating the performance? So one, how do you communicate a slippery surface? If it wasn't a slippery surface, the object would go like this and come to a stop. Slipperiness is a lack of friction. So I want a nice even slide. So when you're on ice, you just slip along, not slowing down. The second part of this performance is the off balance. Someone who's trying to balance themselves on a slippery surface and you know, falling forward, back, back forward, um, it's completely chaotic. So as I'm moving the soap along, I'm just kind of making stuff up. I'll go back a frame, forward, forward, back, hold it, back, forward, and kind of just making it up as I go along. That I think that adds more of a natural performance. If you try to plan out that chaos, it might look a little stiff. One more thing I can mention is that even in this beginning part of the shot, so if what I've done so far is the beginning, then this beginning has a beginning, middle, and end. Calm, let the audience catch on, it's a bar of soap. I'll get a little chaotic in the middle, and then at the end here I've calmed down, and then build into the next big thing. So even in this beginning, there's a beginning, middle, end. So I've just finished the middle part of this shot, and it is a lot of frames. I just kept going. Uh, let's take a look at it. That's it, that's the fun, chaotic part of this animation. It looks like a bunch of nonsense and just random things happening, but there is a thought process to this. Um, and it's completely different from the first part, because the first part had a point A to point B, whereas this middle part is just a bunch of fun um, in the middle of the screen. But I still broke down this middle section into a beginning, middle, and end. So the beginning is that the soap is here, and I wanted to show off some footwork. So it does a little foot, foot, foot slide. And then the middle part is that I wanted to add some dimension to this shot. So I have the soap uh, do a bunch of poses and slipping, but do a 360 in the process. And that just gives a more dynamic performance um, rather than just facing the same way the whole time. And the third ending part to this middle part is that the soap then gets out of control and does the spin, spin, double spin, and then land and <laughs> spin around on the ground. One of the most common questions I get about stop motion animation, especially from beginners, is how do you know how much to move the object each frame? And it's a good question, but there's really no answer. There's no math, there's no science that can tell you how much to move an object. I think I can help a bit by playing back one specific part of this shot and talk about that. I'll play back the part where the soap does the backflip and then I'll talk about it a bit. So this is playing back on a loop and this is the soap doing a slipping backflip. When I frame through this, you can see that the soap, its feet are on the ground for about three frames and then boom, its feet are in the air. And now they favor the top and then boom, the feet are back on they favor the bottom, and then boom, the feet are at the top, and they favor up here. What I'm doing in that slipping backflip makes very little sense. I'll use this lens cap to demonstrate. So you might think to do that flip, you would do 
vertical 45, horizontal 45, vertical 45, horizontal. But that would give you a performance that looks like this like an even windmill kind of a thing. And that's not what I want. What I want in that performance is to feel like this, like. <laughs> so that's why I'm favoring, you know, the feet at the bottom and then the top and then the bottom and then the top. So in deciding how much the soap should move each frame, I'm not thinking what's the movement. I'm thinking how do I want it to feel? So that's why I'm doing smaller movements down here big and then smaller, and then big and then smaller, and then big and then smaller. Because I want that feel of slipping and then hanging in the air. So as you're animating, think, how do I want this to feel? You're not focusing on the literal movement. I've just finished part three of this animation. Let's take a look. Looks pretty good. I might take that wiggle and speed it up quicker off screen just to give it a bit more humor. So in this third part of the animation, I've done the same thing where I kind of look at it with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the beginning of this third part is that the soap anticipates and slides. Um, it's not enough to get across. So it just starts wiggling. That's the middle part. And the end is that it's gone. This third part of the animation is kind of on par with the first in that there's a simplicity to moving from point A to point B. Um, so that's guiding the animation and I'm just making decisions about how the soap does it. That's a wrap on the soap animation. I'm going to take this footage, I'm going to key out all this green and I'm going to attempt to film a nice background plate of a bathtub. I'm going to layer in squeaky little sound effects. Um, and just do a little extra stuff to bring it to life. This is a really great exercise because it challenges you to learn how to use movement to communicate your ideas. If I took this soap and just animated random sliding around, I don't think I'd learn anything. But because I said it has to be, you know, a character who's off balance on a slippery surface, I'm learning how to animate and communicate that idea. It doesn't matter what the object is or what the performance is. Just make that decision and it'll guide you as you're animating and you'll learn, okay, you know, this frame did this, this frame did that. Um, and you'll learn how motion creates a performance. It's a really great way to learn how to become an animator. So I'm gonna end things there. There's so much more I wanna talk about with animation, but I can only fit so much into one video. I think this is good for this one. Um, I'm gonna make more videos with different objects, different performances. And if you have any ideas, you know, leave a suggestion in the comments. Thanks for watching and hopefully you learned something about animation. If you do animate an object, uh, tag me on social media. I'd love to see it and comment. Um, but until then, see you in the next video.